Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and today we're gonna finish off this rotisserie. Okay, so those of you who watched the last episode will have seen that I've got the, um, the bulk of the frame of the rotisserie ready to go. Um, I need to finish off these tabs on the other end of the rotisserie because I didn't buy enough material. I've gone and got some more uh, steel plate, so that's gonna be able to do the other end of this. So it's time to make up some more of these tabs and weld them on. That's the first job. Let's get into it. All right, so now all my tabs are on. The basic frame is now welded together. Now, as I said uh, in the last video, there are a few more gussets and things I'm gonna put into it, but uh, for now, that's the basic frame. The next thing is obviously, I had quite a few people asking me, why have I got these tabs here? Why have I mounted this uh, center bar underneath the frame? Why didn't I mount it on top? Well, one of the things is I'm trying to get as much clearance as possible so I can have I wanted to keep the rotisserie as low as possible, so these going down the bottom gives me more clearance for when the car turns around, so it doesn't, uh, hopefully, will not hit these, uh, these lower bars. Obviously, I need to move it around, which means I need to put some wheels on it. And I've got these big, heavy-duty casters. Um, unfortunately, I only got two with brake. They didn't, they didn't have any, any uh, uh, all the others that have brakes, but I'm going to lock this thing down pretty well. I'm gonna put these, the two with brakes, on opposite corners. And um, with mounting these wheels, the, uh, the next thing I need to make sure and, uh, and be conscious of is the size of my trailer. Now, my car trailer, the, the tray of the trailer is 3.3 meters long and giving a bit of space for uh, movement and these wheels, etc. Basically, I'm going to place my uh, wheels at 3.1 meters, and I'm not gonna bolt them to these lower rails, because that, again, that's gonna lift the, um, the car up very high, and um, I don't want it really high for a couple of reasons. A, uh, I'm not that tall, so uh, mounting up high, I'm not gonna be able to reach, and B, I want it to be able to fit into the booth. And the booth is, uh, you know, is a, is a set height, and I want to try and be able to get it in the booth and at least get it up on its side or, or something, so I can sort of move it around, so I can paint bits and pieces. Um, so what I'm going to do is, for these wheels, I'm going to mount them on a tab that comes out. I'm going to get another piece of uh, box section and weld it out to the sides, and I'm going to weld these wheels onto the sides, all four, uh, all the way around, and uh, hopefully we have uh, a frame that is then up on wheels and uh, able to be mobile. So, I didn't think this through. Um, basically, I welded on my mount here and I went to start getting ready to put my caster on and then realized if it's gonna be sitting here, it's not gonna be able to spin around and uh, basically it'll only be able to go uh, forwards and backwards and only spin on one direction. And the trouble is, is that, yeah, it's just, it's not gonna work. I'm not gonna be able to maneuver the uh, thing. So these are gonna have to go on the bottom. I'll, probably, I'll put them on the bottom of this uh, main rail. I could extend these out and it puts more uh, torque on, on this arm. It puts more strain on the welds, giving it different torsional force. Um, and also, uh, all, all it's really saving me is uh, sort of 65 mil height. So it's gonna be 65 mil higher than it was, but it'll get a bit more clearance to get it on off the trailer. So these are gonna get welded straight on the bottom of that. So I'm gonna do that later. And that means it's time to actually start looking at how I'm going to mount the car to the rotisserie itself. 
Let's get so basically, uh, what people often do is they mount the rotisserie onto these front bumper mounts and that's how they mount the car. The trouble is, is that I'm cutting this lower area off because it needs to be repaired. So what, the way I'm going to mount it is I'm going to mount it in here in the engine bay to the uh, engine mount placing. So I've got to make up a couple plates here and make some mounts up to mount it to there. So you can see here I've made uh, two nice big six mil steel plates. I've bolted them to the engine mount. So that is the start of my bolt on framework. I'm gonna work the whole mount up off of that. And the idea is to make basically an inverted Y. So I'm gonna do um, a piece of steel, 90 degrees out of that one, 90 degrees out of the other one, joining in the middle and then going up. And then I'll uh, bring it across to the rotisserie itself. So um, that's the plan. Let's start making this Y. Okay, so my Y piece is welded into the car and it's all uh, exactly the way I want it. Now I need to build a piece across and down into this tube. Now I've lowered the car down at the moment, lower than where it's going to sit so that I can, uh, I can get in here. Now I'm gonna have to raise it up again and um, start actually uh, making the piece up and try and work out roughly where I want it to rotate. Now I had a look at a bunch of different uh, 105s on rotisseries. Unfortunately, Tim didn't have any on rotisseries when I was down there, but um, most of them seem to be sort of on the level with the lower section of the grill. Sort of uh, the rotating point seems to be about here. So I'm gonna raise the car up so that it's basically uh, the rotating point is where I want it. And uh, hopefully that'll be pretty close. I can, I will be able to adjust this later and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. But uh, for now, let's uh, get up to height and uh, see if we can finish uh, making the uh, frame off. All right, so I have my basic framework all together now. So now you can see that uh, uh, the main frame slips inside of this square tube and I'm gonna put some bolts through here and basically that's going to lock this in at that height for the, uh, the rotisserie and that way I'll be able to move it up and down to change the, um, the rotating point on the car just so that it gets the balance just right. One thing I just had a, uh, an epiphany about and just realized, I am going to have a real issue trying to get this off of uh, where the engine mounts are because if you have a look at this bolt down in here, that is a captive bolt um, and a nut goes over the top. And the trouble is, is that they are coming out on either side, opposing each other I've welded this all solid now, and yeah, it's gonna be really tough to get that off. Uh, hope, I'm hoping there's enough that I can sort of lift it up on one side to get it off. It's gonna be a pain. That is really quite frustrating. Um, I pulled the, um, the nuts off, and of course, it's not coming out. Uh, and in my wisdom, I was thinking I wanna build this well and uh, keep it smaller tolerances. So these lower holes on both of these two brackets, I actually drilled out to just big enough um, for the purpose. I thought, no, I don't need lots of slop in them. Let's make it nice and tight. Let's do it properly. And that's what I did. And now I can't get it off. And even though I'm probably gonna be changing engine mounts or I've, I've got to do something with engine mounts, because as many of you know, I've alluded to the fact that I'm not putting the original engine back in. I'm not ready to cut them off just yet. So um, I think the easiest way to get this out is to actually cut this leg through here and then I can weld it back on again. Um, 
So frustrating. But I think that's the easiest way to do it and, uh, um, and get these off, fix these holes up, make, uh, holes up, make them a bit bigger so that they, uh, they can actually slide on and off again and uh, we can move forward. So let's do that. Yeah. All right, that is looking really good. The inside is done. Um, cutting that leg off and re-welding it on was definitely not the best, um, best thing to do. Well, it was the best thing I had to do in that situation. It would have been much better not getting in that situation, but uh, I think that's well and truly strong enough to do the job. I've just got to add in a couple of gussets on here, on this side, and then this end is done, and then I have to move on to the back end and start doing the, um, the rear mounting points. All right, so I've got my gussets all in, and um, you may be wondering why I only did really small gussets. Um, I didn't, you know, didn't map here. Um, a lot of people who uh, have used these complain that the gussets actually get in the way of you being able to work. So, uh, and particularly because these gussets are actually, uh, normally you put a gusset in on this sort of angle to stop the, uh, um, the movement in this sort of direction, whereas I'm actually doing it more to actually increase the uh, rigidity in that direction, which it will do uh, by, by the fact that these are all tied in together. So it's giving it more surface area. It is going to uh, help that sort of rigidity. And these corners, I wasn't gonna gusset, but because of uh, where I'm gonna put the wheels, I've, um, I've realized that there's gonna be an extra sort of torque on that corner. So I think that'll be, uh, that'll be good. For now, it's time to move on to the back. All right, so you can see here, I've tacked in two uprights and a crossbar onto these. I'm not gonna make the same mistake as I did on the front, so I'm gonna try now unbolting this and see if I can get it out while it's uh, all in one piece like this. If I can't, then I have to modify my design. So it took a little bit of trimming to get the feet so I could get them in and out of the mounting points, but um, the, uh, the bar's back in the car, I'm just gonna bolt it down again, and then I need to make my frame up to uh, basically match what I did in the front. Oh, that is the entire frame of the rotisserie done. So uh, this rear end is all um, welded up now. It's all gusseted, I've added a couple of gussets on either side up here. There's another gusset over here and all the ones on the frame down the bottom, they're all done now. So um, now is a bit of a test. The next thing I need to do is put the wheels on it, but to put the wheels on it, I've got to get it in the air. Good thing I have a hoist. So now I need to lift the car up 
I'm going to try and lift up the entire frame. We'll lift it up now and see if we can get these wheels underneath and uh, fit the wheels and then we're pretty much done, I think. Well, that is it. It is the moment of truth. It is time to actually test it and see how it goes. I need to lower the hoist and then um, see if it all stays where it's supposed to. Helps if I unlock the hoist first. All right, after looking at it for a few minutes, the, um, the big thing that's getting me is that the, there is flex in the whole unit. I knew there would be because it's, uh, uh, there's, there's quite a lot of joins and because of the way I've mounted it, um, what Tim does, he uses pretty much the same method on his, but he has a big steel pole that goes all the way through the car, through the windows. And uh, I'm just noticing the amount of angle that this drops on either end when I take the weight up. Um, there's, there's so much movement in, I mean, this is quite a tight joint and so is this here, but by the time you compound it all together, it makes for quite a bit of movement. And what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is um, before I actually take this off of here, I'm gonna get myself another pole that will go all the way through from one end to the other and uh, I will bolt it around this tube and around the back tube uh, to hold it all nice and solid and straight. It, it will take a lot of the, the, the sag out of it. Um, I think I'll be much happier with that. It'll also help uh, brace these frames on either side. If this, if this is held apart at the top, it's much less force trying to pull these in and snap this off this way. So um, I think overall that's a much better way of doing it. It's going to it's going to strengthen the whole system up a lot. Um, so that's how I'm going to do it. All right. Well, anyway, that is all the time I have today. So that means it's time for fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, in 1923, Victorio Yano, a designer for Fiat, was lured over to Alfa Romeo partly by their young Alfa team driver Enzo Ferrari. The first car Yano designed for Alfa Romeo was the Grand Prix car, the P2, and the P2 was the Alfa's first straight eight. It was a supercharged twin cam with dual carburetors after the compressor. This proved to be a hugely successful car for Alfa, with Antonio Scari in 1925 winning the inaugural Belgian Grand Prix. Sadly, that same year, Ascari was killed at the age of 36 driving the same car in the French Grand Prix. He left behind his seven-year-old son, Alberto, who would also go on to become one of Formula One's greats, only to die himself behind the wheel at the same age, 36. The P2 was still campaigned successfully and brought home Alpha, the World Constructors Championship, later that year. It's so cold. It's cold. All right, um, that was a lot more work than I thought doing this uh, second half. It basically took me two whole days to do the second half of this rotisserie build. And as you saw, I'm not happy with how much it bows, but I think if I put that solid beam in there and bolt it in, it will uh, it'll be nice and solid and do what we need it to do. So that will be in the next episode. But everything is always more work than you think it's going to be, isn't it? Like yeah. a rule of thumb. It's like if you get someone's this car would take age, me two weeks, take five years taking off. me a little bit longer. Mm. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. All right, well, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, as always, like, subscribe. That really helps us out. Um, if you'd like to see the videos a day earlier, you can join us out by um, joining Patreon. And that's all, I think. Yep, follow us on Facebook and Instagram for inside tips along the way. And uh, we'll see you.